Hey everybody, did you know you can go to colinmullen.com in order to get art and art prints? It's why I've made the website. colinmullen.com So hey everybody, the video in the background for this week is going to be the art I did for the March of the Mice, Chapter 10. If you haven't seen that, go watch that. Um, it's a great series, if I do say so myself, because I made it and I'm fooling myself. But hey, uh, being an artist, uh, you, you gotta have a bit of an ego, because otherwise uh, no one will pay attention to you. Uh, because why would anyone if your stuff isn't good? That's a random point that I should probably make into a video at some point. But instead, what I'm going to do is I, I saw some people uh, saying some stuff as fact about art. On, you know, advice on you have to do this when it comes to art. And it was such a stupid statement that I wanted to do a video on it. But it wasn't, you know, a long enough topic to be able to make into a thing. So I was like, hey, why not? We just make a whole video on things that I keep hearing people say that are really stupid pieces of art advice that I don't agree with, and uh, let's let's do a video on that. So that's what the video is going to be. Uh, there's no particular order in these; they're just sort of like as I thought of them. So you know, um, so uh, I guess we should start off with the one that actually made this list happen in the first place and it's the advice uh to flip your art if you're a digital artist you know you hit the flip art button and that way or the flip the layer or flip the canvas so you can see imperfections that you couldn't see before uh that's dumb that makes no sense to me um it that <laughs> i have no idea why people think that that is good advice um, it's okay for things to be a little bit off model or a little bit anatomically incorrect as long as it is perceived to be correct. Like if your eyes, if it works when you look at it, then it's fine. Now, if you think there's, there's something wrong, my, my piece of advice, generally speaking, is if you can't figure out what's wrong with your work, go and do something else, come back, look at it again with a pair of fresh eyes, maybe an hour or two later after you've been thinking about other stuff or maybe a day later or whatever, come back to it, look at it again, and you'll go, oh, dude, that's super obvious. Like the, the whatever is wrong. But like people are flipping around Pokemon to make it so that way they look different. Like to, to see, oh, well, the, this character looks weird when you flip it. And it's like, well, who cares? It looked fine when it wasn't flipped. So shut up. Sorry, this this video I'm gonna be a little bit angry because it's just like really stupid art advice that I feel like is like uh, keeping people from you know reaching like higher heights in what it means to be a good artist at least to me um, and obviously that's subjective but um, stop when you're not having fun that's number two uh, that's another one um, I, okay so it depends. It, it depends. Let me give you an example. I recently took up skateboarding, right? And uh, you know what's not fun? Crashing, uh, falling. Um, if I stopped every single time I bailed and hit the ground and it hurt and I wasn't having fun anymore because I was like, you know, bruised or bleeding or whatever, like probably wouldn't make any progress on getting good at it. Um, so it depends on what your your intent on doing art is. Is it a relaxation thing? Are you trying to improve as an artist? Do you want to get good as an artist? Like, why are you doing art? If you're just doing art for the joy of doing art and not to, you know, necessarily improve being an artist, it's not like a life dream to be an artist, to get good at art, it's just a hobby. Like. For me, like, you know, I'll play a video game and I'm not going to be like an esports like guy who, who's super good at, you know, XYZ games. So like if I stop having fun, I'll just quit because like I I'm doing it to enjoy myself. So, I mean, I guess I agree with it on that level that like I'm not trying to play. And it's weird to say because I am actually someone who plays video games and that's what I do as a job, I guess. So whatever but being good at them is not a requirement <laughs> so uh or at least not some of the games that i play so it doesn't really matter i can just stop when i stop enjoying them uh and you know i guess if you're an artist and you're just doing it for the fun of it and not to try and improve and get good at the thing then you can you know whatever go ahead and stop when you stop having fun like that's not the point for you it depends you know uh this one i really hate number three uh true artists draw from imagination it's dumb. Um, it's apocryphal. Uh, 
pretty much every single artist that, you know, people laud as being great, all of the great old masters, you know, they, they had someone in the studio where they would, you know, paint them and they would add details like, you know, horns or whatever. Um, but they, they would have a reference. I, I don't know why people hate references so much. I think I, I've done a separate video and all of these honestly could probably be separate videos, but I just wanted to make a video that was long enough to justify uh, a thing. So um, if enough people are upset about any of these and disagree with me, I can probably counter their points and make it into a full video. Or if they say something that, you know, I don't know, we'll, we'll just keep going with it. But if you don't have to draw for your imagination, use references. When I'm drawing March of the Mice, you know what I'm doing? I'm going and finding references. If I don't remember what a deer looks like, I'll Google deer images. And I'll, I'll, because I don't know what deers look like off the top of my head. I would love to have a like perfect memory of what a deer looks like so that way I could draw the anatomy of a deer perfectly. But I don't have that yet. And until I've drawn a thousand, a hundred thousand deer, I'm not gonna have a perfect recollection of what a deer looks like. And it's gonna look weird when I draw a deer because everyone's gonna be like, that's, that's not what deer look like. You know, their legs are longer, or they're shorter, or they're fatter, or whatever. That, you know, obviously I'm adding elements to this. I'm adding, you know, other stuff, but 100% from your imagination is no. Um, on the other side of it, only draw what you see. Also dumb. Um, I think it's meant for when you're drawing from reference and you're just trying to, you know, copy the thing down, you're using it as a reference and not to draw the sides of the thing that you don't actually see. And it's good advice in the beginning when, uh, but people take it too far and they think, oh, okay, well then, you know, I don't see horns on this person. So this guy doesn't get horns. He doesn't get wings. He doesn't get, you know, whatever. That's not what that means. It means like, if you can't see, I don't know, his elbow, but it, you know, so you draw his elbow because you feel like it should be there, or, you know, you feel like you should be able to see the rim of the cup, but you can't from the angle you're at. So you, you know, that's what they're talking about. They're not talking about don't draw from imagination. Like, God, why are people giving such bad advice? Uh, don't listen, number, uh, what are we on? Four, five, we're on five now. Uh, don't listen to stuff while drawing. I listen to stuff like, if you watch the, if you're a patron on patreon.com slash revscarecrow and you listen to the, uh, the full contents of this, uh, I'm talking about the stuff that I'm listening to, either music or, um, you know, podcasts or weird crap on YouTube that just I enjoy listening to. And as long as, I mean, I think it's all about flow. Like, I wanna make sure that like, when I sit down to paint, I'm just gonna keep going and going and going, and I'm gonna do the thing that needs to be done. I'm gonna make the work that I need to make. And you know, if I can just like continuously do it, and if I go like, I don't get to listen to this unless if I'm doing art, then that's gonna get me to sit down and do art. If it breaks you out of your thinking process, sure, stop listening to stuff, you know? Uh, it's gonna make your work slower if you're watching stuff, I guess, because, you know, you're gonna have to keep looking over at that rather than, you know, your reference or your painting or whatever. Um, so that, that could make you slower. But again, like, I don't see why everyone has to have this love of speed that we have to go super fast all of the time. That's dumb. Uh, get your work done and get your work done in time. Sure. If you have a, a show coming up and you need it to not be wet by the time that the show comes up, yeah, you should probably like, you know, actually real hammer down and focus. But like, if you can listen to stuff and focus well enough, if that keeps you in the zone, that keeps you doing art, that's getting your work done in time. So there you go. Um, number six, don't draw anime. I, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, wait, Rev, didn't you say the exact opposite of that at one point? And it's like your most popular video on this channel. Uh, no, you need to actually watch the video. God, there's so many people who don't actually watch that video and they don't get what the point of that video was. It's that th I was in a life drawing class and the, they, some kid came in and started doing like anime in a life drawing class. And it's like, bro, that's not, it's not what we're doing here. Like if, and, and I guess don't draw anime really should extend to a lot of different things. Like don't draw X. Like if X is what gets you drawing, uh, if X is the, you know, art, uh, you know, 
fan art. If you draw a bunch of, uh, you know, furry stuff, or if you draw a bunch of anime or whatever, like, just draw, just do art. Because the more art you do, the more chances you have to uh, make little discoveries or make mistakes that you can learn from, that you can apply to other stuff. I used to draw anime when I was a teenager because that was a thing that people did when they were teenagers. Is it cringe? Yes, all of my drawings from when I was a teenager are, are kind of cringe, but like, whatever. You know what happened? I learned a lot about how to draw lines, about how to do art, and I can apply that to current day things, and it's just, you know, because I was enjoying myself, again, back to that, because I was enjoying myself and I was able to get a flow going, I was able to, you know, keep doing it. And now I'm at this state where I can just draw for extended periods of time and I can enjoy myself while doing it. And you don't have to enjoy it all the time like I talked about in that other one. But, you know, I got the work done, you know, and I, I don't see why we have to go, oh, well, it's not real art if you do this. It's not real art if you do realism. It's not real art if you do anime. It's not real art if you do furry stuff. It's not real art if you do fan art. No, that's stupid. That's all dumb. Just, you know, obviously there's some copyright concerns and stuff like that. And, you know, if you're a artist who's trying to sell their work, you need to worry about that. And you also need to worry about, like, uh, marketability. Like, oh, okay, what can I, can I not sell and all that jazz. That's, that's a different discussion, obviously. You can't, you know, sell copyrighted material but you know uh fair use is a thing and i'm not a lawyer so don't take my advice on what you can and can't draw there but anyway <sighs> this video upset me <laughs> you know what wouldn't upset me uh if you went to uh patreon.com slash rev scarecrow and donated uh a couple bucks you get access to the full content like i was talking about that was a smooth transition dude i love that uh and uh if you donate five dollars or more not only do you get access to the discord but you also get um in the credits here that's what these people did starting with my mom thank you mom i love you and thank you wap Poo. thank you top houndor thank you tiffany Thank you, The Drunk 2010. Thank you, Terry Maverick. Thank you, Snout Punk. Thank you, Orthogonal Caster. Thank you, Neoax. Thank you, Mortis Nautis. Thank you, Micah. Thank you, Maliciousness. Thank you, Kayla Hollinger. Thank you, Gala. Thank you, Dragon. Thank you, Chiptune Glitch. Thank you, Bubba Fair. Thank you, Bep. Thank you, Andy. And thank you, Amber. You guys are great. Thank you so much for supporting me so that way I can make videos about how I'm angry. <laughs> um, if you enjoyed this video and you stayed up till now, um, check out some other videos. They'll be popping up at about now and you could subscribe and then you could get me talking about other things. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I'll see you next time.